Um, all right, so uh, uh, there's a specific technique that you have to use when you set up a column, and that's because whenever your material runs through the silica on the column, you want that silica to be as even and as homogeneous as possible, right? So you don't want air bubbles, you don't want voids, you don't want some of the column to be more dense than other parts of the column, because that means that different parts of the column are going to run through different speeds, right? Whenever you run your material through the column, you want to run it through Right, if, it's, if it's sitting on the top of the column, you want it to run through in as tight of a band as possible, as small of a band as possible. So if the silica, whenever you start, if the top of the silica is slanted, rather than running through in a band that's this big, right, it's going to come through the column in a band that, that's this big. Right? So the quality of the silica, the quality of the pad of silica that you make in the column is, is really important to the success. And so that's really what goes into the techniques um, of making a column. Right, so the first thing that you want to do, so these are the columns that you're going to use. They're, they're glass, they have a little plastic nozzle at the bottom. Um, each of them come with this plug, and you can use it to plug the bottom of the column. Right, And they also come with a cap that has a little hole in it um, that just screws on the top of the column. Right? So when you start off, you're going to get all three pieces. You want to clamp the column twice, so it's, it's perfectly straight up and down. So adjust the clamps accordingly. Right? You want to also make sure that it's stable. Um, you're going to get some, uh, a, a couple pipettes. When you get the pipettes, don't put them down onto the, onto the bench top, but get a paper towel, lay them on the paper towel, or get a beaker and put them in the beaker. That will make sure they stay clean. Um, you're going to need a couple Erlenmeyer flasks. You'll also need some test tubes and a test tube rack. This is where you're going to collect your fraction in. Um, and then in the lab, there's going to be some silica, some sand, and other materials that you're going to use. And then um, a squirt bottle. So there are going to be a bunch of these squirt bottles that you can use for the, for the um, column solvent. Um, when you're done with these, empty these out right, so other people can use them. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to set everything up. You're going to take a, a little bit of solvent and you're going to squirt that into the column. All right? You're going to fill it up maybe about two to three inches of solvent. Let the solvent run through and then before the solvent runs out, you're going to cap it. Right? These columns, they have a little uh, glass frit in the bottom, and that glass frit prevents the silica from falling through, but that glass frit also has air in it. Right? So by, by putting solvent on top of the glass frit, frit, letting it run through, we're pushing that air out the bottom of the glass frit, so when we put the silica in, the air doesn't float up through the silica. Right? So we got rid of that air. All right, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to measure out uh, silica. So the silica is going to be in, in a bottle like this, and you're going to measure it out on in an Erlenmeyer flask. Um, silica gel uh, is basically the concentrated form of coal powder, right? So when people get black lung, this is what they get black lung from. It's a really fine powder. Once it goes into your lungs, it doesn't really come out. Okay? So uh, when you use it, try to minimize using it outside of the room. Right, so whenever I weigh it, what I'll do um, is I'll get a tear weight of, a, uh, of an Erlenmeyer flask, right? And I'll just pour some silica in, right? However much you, you, know, you think you need, go over to the balance, weigh it. If it's not enough, right? Add more. If it's too much, you can dump a little bit out, right? Um, you're going to be using for this experiment somewhere between six to eight grams of silica. Um, you're not going to be purifying all of your material. Right? You guys, most of you have between like five and seven grams of material. Um, in order to purify that much material, you would need somewhere around uh, 200 to 300 grams of silica. Right? So if you need a column about that fat, that's about that big. Right? Um, and that wastes a lot of silica. That's going to be like thousands of dollars worth of silica. So uh, we're going to just we're gonna purify fractions, a small fraction, like you know, two and a half. Milligrams to 500 milligrams, and then you're going to do analysis on that, whatever you get out of the column. All right, so you'll weigh out your silica. Once you have your silica weighed out, you're going to add some of the column solvent to it. All right, so you want to pour just a little bit of column solvent in there, get everything wet. All right, you're going to swirl it around, get everything mixed up, and then you're going to let this sit for about five minutes. All right, and I'll often squirt down the silica that collects on the side. The reason why you want to let it sit is because those little silica particles, if you really zoom in on them microscopically, they have all these little tunnels and caves and divots in them. 
and you want to give the solvent time to soak into those tunnels and caves and things, right? That goes along with with making a, a homogeneous uh, silicon pad. All right, so this is going to sit for five minutes. I'm not going to have you just stare at me for five minutes while we wait. So we're going to imagine that, that sat for five minutes, right? So you have your your solvent in here, you have your silica slurry in here, and you want to put it into the column, right? Um, I didn't get a funnel. You should get a funnel, right? Put the funnel in the top of the column, right? And before you uh, pour this into the column, swirl it up so it's nice and homogenous. And then you're just gonna pour it into the top of the column. Okay. And I put a little too much solvent in there. And then once you have material in there, you can take the nozzle off and drain, start draining some of that solvent out. I didn't get all of my silicon there, so I'm going to take my squirt bottle, add a little bit more solvent, and rinse out the silica that's in here. Oop, and it overflowed. Don't do that. <laughs> Let's be careful of that. Okay, and so you can see when I, when I first opened this up, the solvent flowed out really well. Right, but now that the silica is starting to pack towards the bottom, it's really restricting the flow of the solvent. Right, so what we're going to do, rather than letting gravity push that solvent down, we're going to put the tap, the cap on top of the column. Right, and then in the lab, every hood has has a nitrogen outlet. Here we don't have nitrogen in this lab, so I'm going to just use some air. But you'll hook a tube up to the nitrogen, make sure it's a clean tube. and put the tube up to the top of the column. And that's gonna help push some of that solvent down. I'm just blowing up the silica that's on the column. Right now. Right. So now that some of that's out, get the rest of my silica in there. Does it pushes the solvent out, but it also helps to pack the silica gel. Turn that down. Right, so you can see that silica gel at this point is pretty well packed. What you can do, add a little more solvent to this. pressurize the column, what you can do is beat on it a little bit, and that's going to really help settle the silica gel. All right, so once the silica is packed, once the silica is packed, before you load on the sample, you're going to put a layer of sand on top of the silica. And the layer of sand is really just to protect the surface of the silica. If I were to take material and drop it onto the surface of that silica, it would create a little divot. Right? And that's going to ruin the perfectly flat surface that I want. Right? So I'm going to take a little bit of sand, squirt that in. Um, you don't need much, like a half a centimeter or so, right? just enough to, to protect. And take some solvent, rinse the excess sand down. Right? And if you want, you can jostle it around just a little bit right, to get that sand flat. The sand's really not doing anything more than protecting. So the sand itself doesn't have to be flat, but if you're a little OCD and you like 
tap some things nice and straight and square, you know, go ahead and tap it, get the sand flat. If you tap it too much, it's going to cause the sand to work under the sole, right? So don't tap it, tap it too much. All right, so once the sand is in there, what we're going to do is we're going to basically push out the solvent or push the solvent down until it gets to the surface of the sand. Juice this with a little bit of air. Right, right about there. Right, just to be safe, I'm going to leave a little bit of solvent, and as soon as I see that the actual solvent go away, and all I see is kind of sand start to dry out. I'm going to put the cap back on. Right? So at this point, the column is ready. Right? You can walk away for five minutes and come back and you'll be fine. Right? But you don't want to leave this for a long period of time where the solvent starts to evaporate and dry out. Right? So this is when you want to put your sample on. Actually, have one or two more drops come out of this. There we go. Right? So this is where you want to put your sample on. you put your sample on, you're going to get a pipette. All right, and somebody donated some of their sample today. All right, so you'll have it in a little while. This is about uh, half a gram of sample. And you're going to load it on neat, right? So you're not going to put any solvent in this. All right, so you're going to take it up into the pipette. Right, try to get all of the sample in there. And then really gently, you're gonna put the pipette down into the column and you're gonna drip that material close to the pad of, the sand, pad of sand down the sides of the glass. Right? When it's all in there, you're gonna open this back up Right? And that's going to load that material onto the silica. And once the material is on the silica, it's not going to come back on. Right? So you want to load the material onto the silica while that's dripping. So don't, at this point, don't push air or nitrogen. Right? You can just let it go naturally. Right? As that's dripping, take your, um, uh, your solvent squirt bottle right? and give your vial just a little bit of squirt or a little bit of solvent right? just to rinse out whatever material was in there. Right, swirl it around if you want to. You can take your pipette, take up that solvent, and squirt it down the sides of the vial. Right, once your material is loaded onto the silica, you're going to take that rinse, that little bit of a rinse, and you're going to do the same thing. Right, so you're rinsing the vial, you're also rinsing the sand because the sand has a little compressive on it as well. Right, and then you're going to do that a second time, so just give it a little squirt, right, maybe like a half mil of solvent. Take that half mil of solvent. Right, once the first rinse has loaded on, and you can see the sand drying out, then you can load the second rinse on. Right, at this point, 99% of what was in, or 99.9% .9 of what was in the vial is now column, right, and it's loading onto the silica. If you look close, right, people who are in front, right, you can see there is that the top of the silica is a slightly different color, right? Some of this has to do uh, with the color of the material you're putting on. A lot of it actually has to do with the refractive index of that material, right? So the solvent has a certain refractive index that, mat that, that does not match the silica, so the silica looks white, right? Put some more solvent in here. Um, your material is changing that refractive index a little bit, right? So it's going to make it look a little more white, right? Or a little less white, right? So you're going to, once your material is on the silica, now you could put in as much solvent as you want, right? So we're going to just load this up to the very top. 
right? And at this point, you can start collecting fractions. So the idea is your material's on the silica, right? And the solvent's going to carry it down the column, and it's going to come out at this end. The product, if you notice today, the product is at the very top of the plate. That's the stuff that's going to come out first, right? So we're essentially collecting the product. We're going to allow everything else that we don't want to just stay on the column. We were doing an experiment where, that we had never done. What we would do is we would separate everything out, right? Get everything off, analyze everything, and determine what's the stuff that we want. In this case, we know we want the first stuff, the stuff at the bottom of the plate. That's all garbage, so we're going to just leave that on the plate. Okay. So to collect fractions, right? So once the column starts, you don't want to stop it, right? So once the material is loaded on, you start dripping. You don't want to stop the column because at that point, if you stop the column that material starts migrating up and down and it's going to be collected over a larger band. Right, so to collect fractions, basically all you want to do is put the test tube below the column. If you've clamped everything correctly, the test tube can stand on its own. Um, if you did what I did, it's not going to, so you need to readjust everything. see it's coming out really slowly so if you were to collect 12 fractions at this rate it would take a really long time okay so what you can do is uh, turn on the gas again yep. oh it's still on it's okay. okay put the cap on the column All right you don't want to give it too much pressure right but you can force it to come out a little bit faster And then push through the solvent with a little bit of nitrogen pressure. All right, when this test tube gets full, switch it out. And then keep going. All right, so the, these test tubes, test tube racks are all down in 2049. Whenever you get all of the test tubes full, by that time, your product should be off, all right? Um, if it's not, then you need to collect more, more fractions. But I'm, I'm thinking by that time, it should be off, all right? So whenever you've collected, collected all of your fractions, at this point, you need to determine which fractions have the product that you want. And so you're gonna go back to TLC, all right? So you're gonna take all these test tubes, um, on one TLC, you can draw a line, put six little ticks on that line. These test tube racks hold 12 test tubes, and so you'll TLC every other test tube, right? Just to get an idea approximately where your product is, right? Once you figure out, say, say I, I uh, TLC these, and I see product in test tubes two and four, but no product in test tube six. Right? My second TLC, what I would do is TLC one, two, three, four, and five, knowing that two and four have product in them, six does not, I don't know what that one. Right? Once you figure out exactly where your product is, you can take all those test tubes, consolidate them in a round bottom flask, rinse all the test tubes, rotor map it down, and you have your clean product. Okay, questions about that? All right, so when you're done, Clean these up, what you want to do, you want to get all the solvent out of there. You're going to run it dry, so you're going to run air through it. Turn that up a bit. Keep going. Don't turn off it. Right? And then you're going to run air through it until the silica dries out, or mostly dries out. And then once it's dry, take the column off. Invert it into a flask. And then if you need the air pressure or gas pressure to blow out the rest of the silica, you can blow out the rest of the silica that way. Right? These should be rinsed with um, water and then acetone and then just hung up to dry uh, with the last rinse with acetone. Okay. Um, the X 
excess silica goes into solid waste. Um, all of the solvents are non-halogenated organic solvents, so they can just go into the non-halogenated waste, any fractions that you don't use. Um,